I'm supporting the connection of practitioners across the world because we have so much to learn with and from each other. And, you know, that includes documenting what you're learning, asking your puzzling questions out loud, uh, betraying your ignorance at every turn, um, learning. That's what happens, and you guys are interested in that, so I'm interested in you. It's that fundamental. So the definition that we came up with in Digital Habitats was a technology steward was a person who knew enough about technology and enough about co the community they're serving to help that community provision itself and use the technology. So power users play a super important, or champions or whatever you call them, play a super important role in that they're the people who develop practices and the spread of those practices, if they don't spread, they're not so much useful. You know, if they're just good for one person, they don't accrue the value. So part of technology stewardship is to notice, hey, she's doing really something really interesting. Maybe you'd like to try that. I, I, it reminds me, I don't know, in the early days of using things like Microsoft Word, I'd sit down behind someone else who's using Microsoft Word and go like, you can do that? How did you do that? Because, my, you know, my, my whole practice was based on my own experience, not being able to cross-fertilize the experience of the community. So that's definitely a part of technology stewardship. It's not the only thing, because it's also like, you know, what tools do I choose for my community? Um, let's say, you know, from a Lumio perspective, as you're thinking about, should we turn on this feature or turn it off? Should we, you know, advocate for a new feature that, that you know, influences the development of the technology? And then it's also noticing how the technology influences the community. So, for example, a community that is only working asynchronously may develop a certain set of rhythms that then when they start using something synchronous, all of a sudden it's like, okay, things changed. And, they're, you know, the technology influences the community, and the community does influence the technology. They influence it through use, or they can influence it by, you know, advocating to the people who are doing the programming, in which case that's you guys at Lumio. So it's a whole spectrum of things, um, and certainly... People who show people cool things in, in using a technology are very, very important. And not only does that help improve the use of the technology, it gives people roles, and roles are part of the identity, and identity is part of participation and learning. So it's important in that perspective. And also it creates relationships because particularly with distributed communities, when we, when we think about meeting people, it is much easier to meet someone while you're doing something together versus that kind of like, well, hi, I'm Nancy and I like chocolate and who are you? So that interaction itself is a community building act even if you exclude the technological part of it. Does that make sense? I think classics are how people use a tool like a wiki. It's a super plastic tool. You can use it in lots of different ways and people you know, kind of start with the Wikipedia model because that's what they've seen, that's what they think a wiki is, and then someone all of a sudden comes in and some, does something completely differently. And then people say, oh, this is a co-writing tool? I thought it was sort of like, a, you know, a documentation encyclopedia tool. And, you know, I think when I see people use Google Docs today, they're using Google Docs in a way that's about co-writing, and yet they could use Google Docs in a wiki-like a wiki -like way. So the way the tool is structured influenced the initial adoption, but people, once they see there's a new way to do it, all of a sudden they think, oh yeah, so I've seen adoption of uh, Google Docs for team, team use just explode when, once people realize it was more than uploading a finished document. Like, you know, well, we're having a Skype call, and we can take notes into the Google Doc, and then our, our, our meeting is already documented. It's done. Or we could even throw in a drawing. Um, so th these shifts actually happen through role modeling. Um, another shift that I've seen really grow was uh, in a community called CP Square, which is a community about communities of practice, kind of meta-meta. Um, this whole idea of collective note-taking really became a fundamental part of the community. And then those people carry it off to their other communities. So you see it kind of, you know, work out virally into the much broader network of practice, not just in that particular community of practice. And then, of course, there's the, the famous case of Twitter, which that whole at so-and-so in order to, you know, draw attention, that was developed by users and then 
the developers at Twitter realized, oh, there's that app thing and there's that hashtag thing, and they built that into their technology. So this was a case of a much larger network of users because it took on, it was so useful, it started making those cross connections that were a little bit hard to just make in your head on Twitter. It started making it more useful, and then the technology absorbed that. And that was, you know, that change happened, I think, fairly quickly. I think it's documented somewhere on the web. But for me, that's kind of a classic example of a, of a practice just changing everything.